Good afternoon, friends. My name is Iris Hines Flamer, and I am representing BCDI, which is Black Child Development Institute. We are an affiliate of the National Black Child Development Institute. As you can see, there is a book in front of me, and this book is called Dear Mr. Rosenwald. And this is the book I'm going to be reading to you today. It's written by Carol Boston Weatherford. Illustrator is R. Gregory Christie. And this illustrator actually won the Credit Scott King Award. This story is actually based on a true story, true story of the Rosenwald Schools, which empowered thousands of African-American communities to build schools for children in the 1920s and also the 1930s. Here's a portrait of Mr. Rosenwald. And this dedication page I must read, it says, to all who support education and consider our children worth the sacrifice. C-B-W. This book is written in verse. So this is the first part of the book. Okay, it says, 1921, a one-room school. My teacher, Miss Mays, said, you can't judge a school by the building. When the roof leaks, she calls us vessels of learning. When the floor creaks, she says knowledge is a solid foundation. Wind whistles through walls, blowing the sheet that splits the church into two classrooms. Me on one side, Junior on the other. Till I passed to third grade, I sat beside him counting with my fingers and fidgeting on the pew. Now I know better. My school is not much to speak of, but mama says I'm lucky, even if class don't meet until har during harvest. Now, down here, she said, some black children go to schools in shacks, corn cribs, or not at all. Don't know what I'll do if I couldn't go to school. Harvest break. Just when I memorize the times tables, instead of learning long division, I'll be working in the field. So the children during harvest time, at that particular time in 20s and 30s, could not go to school. They had to work in the field. Now sharecropping. And sharecropping, uh, guys, my friends, would be when you... Uh, grow crops and you have to pay your rent with part of your crops. Six long weeks down row after row, me and Junior work right alongside. Mama and Daddy picking cotton till our fingers bled. Finally, Daddy puts the last bale on the wagon and rode to town. He said our share of the harvest should pay off the season's debt and leave money to spare. Daddy was wrong. He came home with rock candy for me and for little brother, but bad news for mama. We owe more to the white man who owns the land than we made selling the crop. Same story as last year. After supper, I leafed through an old Sears catalog, wishing, just wishing. Later, I heard mama fretting about the baby on the way. Another mouth to feed. I hope it's a girl. Supper. Uncle Bo ate supper with us. He sure talks a lot. I reckon cause he's a preacher. But that don't explain why he eats so much. Between helpings, he invited mama and daddy to a rally at church tomorrow to drum up support for our new school. Soon as Uncle Bo said drum, well, Junior started rapping at the table. Rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, rat rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Mind your manners, Mama said. The new school rally. Uncle Bo opened with a prayer. Then Professor James from the normal school sat or stood in the pulpit, spoke as if he were used to people listening. Years ago, Booker T. Washington started Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. The college grew strong as an oak, but Booker T. would not seek that shade, not as long as young minds starved. 
too many children, too few schools, and not nearly enough money. Julius Rosenwald, the president of Sears Roebuck, has millions earned every penny and believes in sharing. Booker T's book, Up From Slavery, opened Mr. Rosenwald, Rosenwald's mind. So when Booker T wanted to build schools, Mr. Rosenwald opened his wallet. After Booker T passed away, Mr. Rosenwald kept building, not just schools, but pride. Before his foundation would give a cent, you have to raise money on your own. White folks had to pitch in too. There will be one hurdle after another. That means one challenge after another. Do your children deserve a new school? Everyone in church stood clapping. How on earth will poor people fund, find money to give away? Taking root. Well, the church deacons voted to give an acre of land for a brand new school. Space for a building, playground, and garden. Land that would have been used for graves. Now, a seed is sowed instead. Box party. Mom and daddy say raising money is hard work. I say brings, it brings folks together. Mr. Benson, a black farmer, let the rest of his plant let, let the rest of his, of his plant a plot of cotton on his land to sell for the new school. Other folks raise hogs and chickens to sell. Box parties are my favorite. Me and Mama baked two apple pies, put them in a box, and tied it shut. Mr. Tanner said he smelled cinnamon through the box, made his mouth water. He bought our box and ate a slice right away. Daddy bid on a shoe box, but Uncle Bo's bid won. Inside was a dancing doll Mr. Green carved. Daddy blew a jig on his harmonica. Did that doll dance? Passing the plate. Homecoming Sunday, a church full. Uncle Bo didn't need to preach a sermon after going on about the new school. Said we're gathering money a nickel and a dime at a time. The ushers passed the plate. Afterward, Uncle Bo waved envelopes white neighbors sent. $20 in all. Then the choir sang, the Lord will make a way somehow. Just before the service ended, Miss Etta May asked to have a word. I was born a slave, worked hard even after freedom came, never had time for book learning. Here's a dollar from money I've been saving from my burial. Hurry and build that school so I can learn to read my Bible. Blueprints, now blueprints would be like from an architect laying, laying out the print for the school. Professor James came around to see how close we were to breaking ground. After Uncle Bo told how much money been raised, the professor beamed, oh, you're halfway to the goal. Then he unrolled big drawings, blueprints by a Tuskegee architect. 17 different floor plans, some, up, some with up to seven rooms. I'll get lost in a building that big. Our school will have two classrooms with a moving wall between, a room for home arts and trades, cloak rooms and plenty of windows to look out and daydream. So no more one room schoolhouses. Lumber. A family is like a tree, daddy always said. Owl, sp owl sprouting a new leaf. Leona, my baby sister. Soft brown, bright eye. I sing lullabies when she cries at night. This child will have a better chance, Mama said. Soon, building starts on the new school. Several farmers, black and white, cut trees from their land, haul them to the sawmill for cutting, then dropped off the lumber on the lot beside the church. Those trees are about to make history. Raising the roof. I never knew how fast a building cook took shape. After plowing all day, the men hammer and saw till the sun sets and they can't see no more. 
Just before the cold snap, they raise the roof. Soon as the weather breaks, said Daddy, the walls and windows will go up. Won't be long now. Hand-me-downs. Some men were chopping wood for the classroom's pop-bellied stoves, and other men were painting. Cream ceilings and gray walls. When a truck pulled up with old desks and used books from the white school, Miss May thanked the driver again and again. Then she gave us erasers to clean stray marks from the books, scribbles, doodles, answers, names. I wonder if white boys and girls learned the same as us. Playground. Daddy hung a swing from a branch of the old oak tree and Uncle Bo drove a stake in the ground for horseshoes. Junior pitched first, almost got a ringer. I'll have to practice to beat him. 1922, White Oak School. Uncle Bo cut the ribbon at the doorway and we marched into the new school, proud as can be. The place sparkled after we sang, lift every voice and sing. Professor James told us to be proud. Learning is priceless, he said. He gave Miss Mays a framed picture of Mr. Rosenwald for the lobby. Uncle Bo called Miss Shaw, Miss Shaw up front, a pretty new teacher from the city. No more eight grades in one room. Miss Shaw has a sing-song voice. Children, you are diamonds in the rough. I will polish you bright as stars. So now she will give these children an opportunity. I had to speak next, clamming hands, knees shaking, heart in my throat. Thank you, parents and neighbors, for building this brand new school. Your sweat taught us a lesson. Tomorrow is in our hands. Dear Mr. Rosenwald, even before the bell rang, we children lined up at the door me with bows in my hair and ham biscuits in my lunch pail. I share a desk with Lottie May. Miss Shaw got busy right away. Our first lesson, letter writing. Dear sir, I am 10. I like to read books. My best subject is arithmetic, which is also math today for us boys. My parents are counting on me to learn all I can. This school was the first new thing I ever had to call my own. I'm going to stitch me a dress in the sewing classroom. One day, I'll be a teacher like Miss Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Rosenwald. Yours truly, Ovella. So that is the end of Dear Mr. Rosenwald. Please in, in, continue to enjoy active reading at least 15 minutes every day. And also re visit readcharlotte.org and visit our website and social media channels for culturally relevant books. Thank you.